In the previous lesson, we developed a C-sharp MapReduce job using Visual Studio 2012 and then ran that in a local instance of HD Insight for Windows. In this lesson, we're going to take the same job and adapt it to run in the cloud using HD Insight on Windows Azure. For the most part, the job is going to be the same. What's going to be different is where the data resides and how we interact with the Azure environment, as well as how HD Insight interacts with the Azure Blob Storage. So before we get started, let's just overview what this architecture looks like and what we're going to do. So first, we need to get data into the cloud. And we can land data in Azure in a number of different ways, and we can put it in some different places. The preferred data storage location for HD Insight on Azure is the Azure Storage Vault, which runs on top of the Azure Blob Storage. This is a very cost-effective place to put data and has been highly optimized to work efficiently with HD Insight. There are a number of ways to get this data into the cloud. Maybe it's already there, or maybe it's on-premises with us, and we need to upload it. In this case, I'm going to upload data first using Cloud Explorer in my case. I, I could use AZ Copy, which is a command line tool, or I could use C Sharp or any number of, of different uh, clients that you could use. You can pick whichever one works for you. I like Cloud Explorer because it has a nice GUI and reminds me of just using Windows Explorer on my desktop. So for this kind of operation, I really like it. So the first thing I'm going to do is copy these files into the cloud. And I've already done that, and I'll show that to you here. So if I look at Cloud Explorer, and you can see kind of my Cloud Explorer looks like the diagram I have on the right here. If I look in the social media container, I have an input folder, and you can see those two files are already landed out there. Each of them is about 20 megabytes. Uh, this is a pretty small job, just so that it runs pretty quickly during the course of this short video. So we'll copy that data out there, and that will be sitting in Azure Blob Storage. The second step is to develop our MapReduce code in C Sharp. So we already have our MapReduce code, and we're just going to make some changes to point it toward the HD Insight on Azure. And when we press the Run button this time, Visual Studio will actually run the application, and the application is going to upload that job into the HD Insight on Windows Azure instance. So you notice none of the data that we have copied into Azure is actually on the HD Insight VMs themselves. All of our data is in the Azure Blob Storage. And, and that's one of the advantages of running this in the cloud, that we can build up our HD Insight cluster and tear it down, and it doesn't affect our data storage at all. There's a previous video that shows how to set that up, and there a link will be in the notes below this uh, video. The next thing that we'll do is go ahead and kick off the job. And actually, when I hit the Run button in Visual Studio, after it uploads the code, it will kick the job off automatically, which is convenient for a development uh, workflow. And when that job runs, HD Insight will go into the blob storage and actually pull the code out so that it can be distributed to the Hadoop nodes. As the nodes run the code, it will pull the data from the input folder. And within the code, if you remember from the previous lesson, there's actually a configuration variable where we put in what the input and output is. So that's where it's reading that from. And you'll see that in a minute. And as the job runs, it will write that output back out to this output folder under the social media container. So again, none of this data is stored permanently on the HD Insight VMs themselves. So as we can build those VMs up and expand them and then take them all down, you know, none of our persistent data is affected by those uh, choices. So let's look at our job and see how we changed it. And if you didn't watch the previous video where we actually created these jobs in the first place. I'll put the links down below. So the first one is the introduction where we created the square root problem and that showed how to set up the Visual Studio environment. The second one after that was showing how we analyze this uh, Twitter data. So if, uh, if you haven't watched that video, uh, you might go back and watch it and, and fill in some of the gaps. But essentially, we're just making a few changes. I'm just going to highlight the changes. The first change is how we connect to HD Insight or how do we connect to Hadoop. Previously, we used the connect to local, which is just a very simple hadoop.connect. And that will just assume that you mean connect to a local instance, and we'll go to localhost. To connect to Azure instead, we need to tell the API what Azure cluster we're going to connect to. And we, so we pass in a URI to that, which is under the Azure HDInsight.net URL. We also pass in our username and password and tell it what account we want the jobs to run under. And then finally, this section might be a little confusing, but we're, we're passing in the blob storage account and the private key for that, as well as the container where we want all this to happen. 
And if you recall back on the slide here, the C Sharp code is uploaded to that blob storage container, not to the HD Insight cluster itself. That's why we need to pass in both the login for the cluster and the authentication information for the container. So all these steps can happen automatically. The mapping routine actually doesn't change at all. It remains exactly the same. So as the job runs, the same data is going to be coming to the mapper. And the same is true for the reducer. The reducer is exactly the same as it was before. No changes there. And then the final change is here in the configuration of the job itself. So I left the code in for the local configuration so you can see what that used to look like. It used to just specify some folders on HDFS that would, in this case, be underneath the current user's folder within the file system. Instead, I have this Azure config routine, which specifies the Azure Storage Vault or the, the blob store locations. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. So as we run the job, HD Insight will use these file locations to go out and, and read data directly from the Azure Storage Vault rather than its local uh, locations. Now, it's not a requirement to do this. You could store data on the HD Insight VMs themselves, but then you would have to be very careful about decommissioning them. I find it makes a little more sense to do it in this way because we can kind of isolate what we're storing in which containers and it has more of a purpose and can be used by perhaps more than one cluster, for example. So as you can see, there's really not that much different here. So let's go ahead and run this. And, and I think before I run it, let me just show you in the with Cloud Explorer what the file systems look like. You can see the social media containers where we're doing all our work. I showed you the input are these two files right now. The output folder currently has nothing in it. That's where our data is going to be written. And then this user folder exists right now because I have run some jobs in this same folder before. But when I run the job again, it will go ahead and upload these files and then run them and pull data from the input, write it to the output, and then we can look at it from there. So let's go ahead and run it. I'll just click the Start button. And what you see on the screen will look pretty much the same as what you saw when in the last lesson when we did this against a local instance. The difference you will probably notice is it's, it's a bit slower because it has to upload the data through the cloud into the Azure environment first to run the job. But other than that, it should look and feel just about the same. And now the job is finished and the window disappears. That was about 45 seconds, 50 seconds for the job to upload the code onto the Azure Blob Store and then kick off and complete running the job up on HD Insight for Azure. So I can do a couple things just to make sure this really worked. The first thing I'll do is to take a look at the file system and see whether my output data is there now. And it is. So I have the little success flag and then I have this part 000 file. It's a very small file because we're just counting some keywords in a, in, in a small data set. So I'm going to double click on that and open that in my text editor so I can look at what the result was. So the output is what I expected. I have the list of all the hashtags that were seen in the two files that had all the tweets as well as the number of occurrences of each hashtag. So that's pretty much the process. We just saw how to use the same MapReduce C Sharp code that we used on our local HD Insight and push that up into uh, Windows Azure in the HD Insight for Azure environment. And again, and just to review, you know, we, we put our data into the blob storage. We put our code into the blob storage, which Visual Studio will do as part of the debug process if you wanted to. And then as the HD Insight cluster runs, it pulls in the code and the input data from blob store and writes back out to blob store as well.